Hi, welcome to the first training of SAP FICO module. This is a video based training and it covers complete SAP FICO module. Let's start with what we will be doing in today's training. Today's training is divided into three parts. First, an overview on the SAP FICO module. Second, we will be covering the course contents. And in third, we'll be taking up a practical example in the SAP FICO part and we'll see how it works within the SAP system as live. Now, as discussed, the table of content, which includes SAP FICO overview and then the course content. The course content is divided into two parts. One is FI submodules overview and then the controlling some modules overview and then the other topics. Now moving on to the SAP FICO module overview. SAP FICO module refers to the finance which refers to FI and the controlling which is CO module. FI and CO are the core modules of SAP system. FI which is finance refers to financial accounting whereas CO refers to controlling and generally it is termed as the managerial accounting. FI is updates for external reporting and CO is used for internal reporting purposes. The module is tightly integrated with sales and distribution module which is called SD whereas material management which is called MM module. So FICO is very much tightly integrated with the SD and the MM module part. This FI and CO are two different sub parts which is termed as we have seen. One is termed as FI which is for external reporting purposes whereas CO which is for internal reporting purposes. This will now this diagram will give you a better picture of the FICO part. There are two kinds of reporting being done that is external and internal accounting or reporting. As you can see on the on the diagram on the picture that the external parties over here are the external parties who need various informations from the company's accounts and finance department. Whereas within the box, these are the internal parties which need information for internal purposes. Like for auditors, they need accounts and the financial statements for auditing perspective. Similarly, for tax authorities, they need different tax related information, which is a part of FI that is financial accounting. Similarly, the stockholders, banks, legal authorities, these all needs the financial statements that is profit and loss account and the income statement and which is being generated from the external accounting that is SAP FI module. Whereas for internal reporting like administrators or the management, managers, controllers to control various costs within the company, they need the internal reports which is a part of controlling module. So these are two different parts which we will be taking up in two different parts in which we will be first taking up the FI module and then after that we'll be going to the CO module because without FI module you cannot implement CO module in any any organization as all the data flows from the FI that is the finance and accounting to the controlling part or to the managerial accounting part. Moving on the training which we are going on uh, which you will be taking up will include these three things. One is step by step configurations, step by step transaction processing and a step by step report generation. Whatever the FICO whole course or the complete FICO module part will be providing you each and every configuration steps 
what you have to do, what kind of a configurations to be done. And once you have done the configuration, we will be going for transaction processing so as to check that whatever the configurations are done are successful and up to the mark. And we'll be able to deliver the results. And once you have completed the configuration and the transactions, then we'll be looking for the reports as the various reports are needed within an organization for external reporting as well as for internal reporting. So moving on to the next. Now these are the various topics in the FA module which we will be covering. This is the part of the course content. The course content is divided into two parts. One is FA and another is CU. So in the FA submodule overview, it includes your enterprise structure general ledger accounting, then accounts payable, accounts receivable, bank accounting, assets accounting. So if you go to these one by one, the enterprise structure, as you can see on the screen, is the organizational structure that represents an enterprise in the SAP system. It is a portrayal of an enterprise hierarchy where there is a client and then there is a company and the company code, then the business area and the functional areas. Whereas moving on to the next is your general ledger accounting. The general ledger accounting holds all the accounts for balance sheet and income statements. The leg general ledger accounting includes your chart of account, account group, master data, then posting journal entries, recurring entries, accrual and deferrals, parking reversals and mass reversals then again interest calculations and clearing and auto clearing financial statement versions and reports so this is a part of general ledger this is just an overview what we will be covering as a course content and later on we'll be going for each of these topics in detail how these have been done again moving on to the next accounts payable accounts payable which is basically re related to the vendors or the suppliers. In this, it is a real-time integration with the general ledger part. Then it's integrated with the material management as a part of your procurement cycle. And it includes your outgoing payment program, then the vendor master data, invoice posting, payments, down payment, then the period and year end activities, and the various reports related to the vendors or suppliers, you can say. If we move on to accounts receivable, now in this also it is a real-time integration with the general ledger. It is highly integrated with sales and distribution module and then material and management module as a part of sale cycle. The receivables includes customer invoice posting, incoming payment, down payment from customer, then interest calculation on the customers if the payment has been delayed, dunning for sending notices to the customers for their payment due, then the period and the year and activities and the various reports related to customers. Bank accounting. Bank accounting which includes all your banking transactions like incoming payment from the various parties, then the outgoing payment to suppliers and others and to employees all those will be covered in this so we'll be including your banking configurations then the check management how the check have been issued where it has been uh, been maintained within the sap system if a check has been bounced how we would be how we would be dealing with that and how we can get the reports related to the checks and related to the banking balances and all those will be deal in it then automatic payment run can also be done bank reconciliation a real-time bank reconciliation is possible in the SAP system and then the cash journal which includes your day-to-day -day cash transactions. The next comes is the asset accounting. Asset accounting is a real-time integration with the general ledger and it is also highly integrated with different other modules like material management, accounts receivables, then accounts payable and the cost accounting or you can say controlling that is the CO module. Asset accounting we will be including the asset master data, various asset transactions like purchasing of assets, retirement of assets, scrap, 
then transfer of asset from one department to another department or one place to another place within the organization how depreciation calculation is done then again the period and and year end activities to be taken care of and the various reports within the asset accounting part so these are the major modules in the SAP FI part and apart from this we'll be taking up other topics within the SAP FI CO FI part which you should be knowing you should know as a as a consultant like sale and purchase tax the different kind of a tax has been imposed by the the government or by the legal authorities or the tax authorities related to sale and purchases have been taken care of over here then the withholding tax part which take care of the taxes on your or tax deposit on your withholding tax refers to the tax deducted at source so the amount of tax which is deducted on your income or the salaries which has been deposited to the government directly by the employer so that will be taken up within the withholding tax part even the vendor payment and vendor invoice have been subjected to the withholding tax or the TDS will be taken up in this then there are various foreign currency valuations will be taken care like the fluctuation in foreign currencies and the foreign currency transactions if your your particular company's currency dealing in the in in dollars and suppose you are having transaction in euros or yen or some other currencies how you would be taking care of that so that will be taken care in the foreign currency valuation part then again the financial statement version which take care of your financial statement how it will be reflected how you want to see your financial statements within the SAP system you can design that so that is financial statement version and broadly in the FI part what are the different year period and the year and activities we will be taking care of that as a consolidated part and apart from this another important part is integration with other modules now the integration includes FI and CO that is and the financial accounting and controlling module integration then the FI and MM that is the material management that refers to procure to pay and FI and SD that is order to cash so a real-time transactions flows from various modules in the FI module for for the reporting perspective and that is why this integration is very very important to be taken care of and you, it's very important for you to understand this very seriously so this is a part of SAP FI module content which we'll be covering and moving on to the next is your SAP CO overview and the SAP CO content which will be taking care in the training part so controlling is the term by which SAP refers to managerial accounting controlling provides information for management decision making it basically refers to the minimizing the cost and maximizing the profit through actual and plan analysis so there are various major reports which gives you the status of what were the actual spends actual cost and what were the plan cost and accordingly the analysis can be done that where the cost has been exceeded and why and it has been exceeded and the things can be taken care of that so it is a fully integration with other modules controlling and financial accounting are independent components in the SAP system but yet they are very much linked to each other as due to the integration path the data flow between the two components take place on a regular basis that is a real-time basis so moving on to the course content which we'll be covering up in the controlling module that includes your cost element accounting FIC or reconciliation so the reconciliation over here is done on a real-time basis you don't have to go for any manual reconciliation of FI and CO it will be done by the system automatically on a real time cost center accounting in the cost center accounting will also look after the cost center planning how it has been done so you can also plan for your cost or for your expenses which have been incurred in the organization the next comes up is the profit center accounting then the internal orders internal order planning product costing and profitability analysis if you understand if we 
uh, just go for a brief of each of these. So if we move on to cost center accounting, the first part has a content in the controlling. The cost and the revenue element accounting provides an overview of the cost and revenues that occur in an organization. Most of the values are moved automatically from financial accounting to the controlling part. Cost center accounting. The cost center accounting is for controlling purposes within your organization. It is useful for a source related assignment of overhead cost to the location in which they occur. Cost center accounting defines the smallest area of responsibility within the company that causes and influence the cost. The lowest level to which you can meaningfully assign direct and indirect cost. So basically cost center accounting in a simple words take care of your different cost or expenses that have been incurred and we can have the report with the basis of these cost centers. Then comes the profit center accounting. Profit center accounting is providing the opportunity to analyze and report to the management regarding internal profitability of diff subunits. So as many profit centers you create within a particular organization, it gives you more, lip, more options to analyze the profitability of those particular subunit parts. So it is profit center can be otherwise can be termed as a company within a company where you can get different reports or even you can generate financial statements for that particular profit, say, profit center which you have defined to a subunit part. So profit center can be set up according to your product line or divisions even as, uh, as per your geographical factors or regions and offices also and it could be even function like production and sales. So it depends how the organization wants the reporting, how he w the management wants its profitability to be checked within internally and accordingly they can go for deciding their profit centers. Then we'll be moving off to the internal orders. Internal orders are normally used to plan, collect and settle the cost of internal jobs and tasks. Internal orders are used for short-term purpose like job fairs, project, etc. Whereas cost center are used for long-term purposes to capture the day-to-day -day cost. So you can even assign budgets for these jobs which the system monitors to ensure that they are not exceeded. Moving to the next is product costing. Product costing is the process of tracking and studying all the various expenses that are accrued in the product in the production and sale of a product. It roughly comprises of the raw material expenses, process cost like wire gas or electricity which has been consumed and other elements such as transportation tool cost, staff cost, welding, etc. So overall, it, the product costing basically is used for costing a product. So it basically includes the, uh, the all the manufacturing expenses, all the expenses which have been incurred on manufacturing of a product so as to know what is the cost of a product manufactured. Whereas the profitability analysis, profitability analysis enables us to analyze the profitability of market segments according to the following characteristics like products, customers, sales districts and others. So if you want your profitability to be analyzed as per different market or different segments, you can define those market segments as a product. So you can analyze your profitability product to product wise or even if you want 
the market segment to be defined as customers so you can calculate or you can even analyze the profitability from customer to customer or even it can be as per the region wise like you can define the profitability for market segments like US East or US West, West or even the whole country as US and the country to country you can take different as a segment and accordingly you can you can have a reporting analysis that from which particular product or customer or region you are getting more profit from the business so these are the basic major sub modules in the controlling part apart from this we'll be covering some of the important topics for SAP FICO and these are certain parts which you will not get anywhere else as a training part because these are something which is highly advanced topics which nobody has been uh, interested to give an overview or a full knowledge regarding topics like tables and fields overview so table and fields overview basically is technicals about FICO how the various data are been used how they are been saved and then with the basis of those data how a customized report can be created so if you want to create anything as a customized apart from the standard SAP system you must have the knowledge of tables fields apart if you don't have that you will not be able to do any customization in the SAP so to give you a better uh, more idea in SAP whatever the data we punch or we whatever the transactions we do into the SAP system basically the transactions are saved at the back end with different tables and if you want to know there are more than 400 million tables in SAP where the data is stored from different modules so over here we'll be looking after what are the different FI and CO tables which are important to uh, for different transactions will be taken care in the table and the fields overview the moving to the next is SAP Fury SAP Fury is a new technique a new technology which has been taken up by SAP and with the help of SAP Fury SAP is able to provide you different applications so that you don't have to stick to your your personal PC or your desktop system or to your to your office seat that for doing any particular work you need to be uh, to be on on that particular restricted mode no SAP provides you different applications and with the help of those applications you can do your work wherever you are you are not being restricted to a particular per personal computer or a tablet or a mobile phone you can go parallel to any of these options now and you can do your work wherever you are it is not a necessity that you have to reach back to your seat or to your purse to your PC so as to get those particular work done just like for an example if a manager has to approve the leaves or the project or to the travel request of any of the employees or colleagues in that case he don't need to go back to SAP system for those approvals if he has got those applications on his phone with the help of SAP Fury which is SAP has tried and provided many of the different applications the manager can do his jobs on the move from his mobile phone or from a tablet as well so there are different new applications within the SAP FICO modules are also which are in the market and people have been able to use that with their tablets and with their with their smartphones as well so it is what we'll be looking after in the SAP Fury what it is all about and what are the different applications which are there in the market which will be used as an application on the smartphone or a tablet on or on a PC as such moving to the next is LSMW LSMW is basically a legacy system migration workbench this is one of a very important tool from SAP which is used for data migration data migration which is a part of any implementation project whenever we go for 
any implementation project of any any SAP from then in that case you need to move the data from the legacy system of the client to the SAP system so to do that this LSMW is very very helpful and with the help of LSMW only we move those data of from the legacy system to the SAP system so that now the client can will be able to use the SAP system for the future reference and the next comes up is the report painter so report painter is again a tool for various information systems for finance and controlling module basically report painter is been defined or has been created for controlling module so all the different reports in controlling are been created with the help of report painter and it is very simple and easy to use and any anyone can easily create their reports within the SAP system so there are different reports there are different modules for whom for which the reports have been created in the report painter only from the controlling side like uh, there is cost center accounting profit center accounting product costing or maybe internal order or profitability analysis so whatever the kind of a reports you need out of these different modules those reports can be directly created in the report painter and in that case the functional consultant is not dependent on the technical that is the ABAP consultant for their programming for the new report so you can create your new reports of its own however SAP even provide many of those standard reports in the report painter also for the controlling part and now these days even the report painter is used for SAP FI part as well for different financial reports so if you want you can create your financial reports with the help of report painter easily into the system so this is what we have done with the first and the second part we have we have covered the overview on FICO module and then we have these are the different course content that we will be covering in the SAP FI and CO module and these are certain important topics apart from that like table fills SAP Fury LSMW and report painter which will be uh, as a extra topics for you so as to learn extra things which will be which will be giving you a few extra fruits uh, from the training part so now we'll be moving to the third part that is a practical example so we'll be taking up a practical example which will give you a more understanding of how the SAP system works so what we'll be doing is we'll be moving with the first sub module in the SAP FI part that is enterprise structure and we'll see how those structure can be created within the SAP system. So if you talk about a structure, as whenever you, you go for any of the uh, implementation project or any of the project you are working with, you first need, if you want to create those things in the, in the SAP system, you need to first define a layout that how you will be taking up things in the SAP system. So what will be your company, what will be the business areas, what will be the, the client and all those things. So you need to have a structure, organizational structure that there will be a group company, then the group will have how many number of companies will it have and then within that what are the different functional areas and business areas. So we'll be discussing those all things one by one. So if you talk about the enterprise structure, as you can see the diagram on the screen, the structure is something like this, that there is a client and within the client in which we work, there is a group company. In group company, SAP it is called as a company. Then within the group company, there are a number of different company codes. The company codes refers to the legal entities with which we have been working with and those legal entities can be defined in the SAP system as the company code and then the different business areas so we'll be discussing each of these things one by one so these are the different configuration steps that need to be defined within the enterprise structure like you need to define a company then you need to define the company code and you need to put these together as a link so that they can decide among each other that 
how they are related to each other so we need to assign the company to the company code and then defining the business area and then define the credit control area and assigning the credit control area to the company code so let's take this one by one if we move on to the first configuration step that is to define the company if we talk about a company company is the smallest organizational unit for which individual financial statements can be drawn up according to the relevant commercial law basically in sap group companies are referred as company whereas in general terms we talk about a particular company as a legal entity but in sap there is a slight change that the group companies are termed as company in the sap system a company can consist of one or more company codes that means a company can consist of one legal entity or it can have more than one legal entities so if you have got number of different legal entities or organizations they are together termed as company in the sap system all company codes within a company must use the same chart of account and the same fiscal year so that's we'll talk about once we will be at the chart of account part now moving on to the next is company code so the company code is again the smallest organizational unit of financial accounting for which a complete self contained set of accounts can be drawn up for purpose of external reporting so whenever you go for any external reporting part this company code becomes entity this includes recording of all relevant transactions and generating all supporting documents required for financial statements so company code basically refers to a legal entity or you can say uh, an an organization so if you got if you have got number of different legal entities they all together is termed as a company in sap and one single entity is termed as a company code so how we can create this company and company code in the sap system that is what we will be looking for so now let's move on to the sap system and we'll see how we can create these so now moving on to the sap system one thing which need to be discussed is whenever we go for configuration steps how you will be configuring it there are two way outs of going for any of the configuration steps one is with the help of menu path which gives you a path one to one how we can reach to that particular configuration step and the another part is transaction code transaction code is a four character code by execution of that you can directly reach out to the screen to which you want to do the configuration but for each different configuration part there are different code for that so it is why remembering the transaction code is very tough that's why we refer it that we should always use the menu path so as that will give you a better idea and you will be able to remember it for a longer period of time so to moving on to the path there is first an important transaction which need to be executed and that particular transaction is termed as spro this spro transaction is very important for a consultant without this without access of this to you you will not be able to do any configuration steps in the sap system so you need to first execute this transaction over here in this transaction field spro and then enter so once you enter it takes you to the next screen and you can see now the screen has changed to customizing execute project this particular screen is a very important screen in this screen you will find three options over here one is sap reference img and the another is img information and then the project analysis now what is important for you is the first option that is sap reference img in this the img refers to the implementation guide 
So this is the tab which takes you to the implementation guide where we do all the configurations related to the implementation part or related to any of the configuration part. So once you click on to this SAP reference IMG, now it will take you to the next screen where you will find all the different module options. So this is the screen now which displays you the IMG that is implementation guide and this is the guide where every consultant does their configurations as this particular screen covers all your different modules as you can see for financial accounting there is FI module is there then if you go for controlling is there there are different other modules like sales and distribution material management quality management then project system production planning so all different modules you will find over here only now what we need to do is we need to structure our, we need to create our own enterprise structure so for enterprise structure you will find even that you will there is an option of enterprise structure on this particular screen so what we need to do is we need to expand this part to expand you need to go to this arrow over here and you need to click on to that and it will expand so once you have clicked on to this it has been it has expanded now if you again click on to this it will collapse so you need to go to this enterprise structure and you need to expand it and then you need to go to definition so once you again click on to this definition it will get expanded and within definition you will find there are different options so what we need to do is we need to go to financial accounting as we are doing SAP FI module so we need to expand the financial accounting and as you expand now you'll find a number of different options so here you can find define company so if you want to create your own company that is your own group company then you need to go to this define company so the path is simple first you need to go to execute the SAP SPRO transaction code and then you need to go to SAP reference IMG and have to click on that and it will take you to this particular screen and once you reach on to this screen you need to then click on to the enterprise structure then to financial to definition and then to financial accounting and then to define the company now if you want to define the company you need to execute this option over here as you can see this symbol you need to click on to it and it will take you to define company so now click as clicked on to it you can see now a new screen has been generated on the system and now you can go and you can create your own group company over here so suppose I want to create a group company I can go to this new entries and once I click on to this new entries now there are certain options coming on your screen so this company over here is over here you need to define a, a maximum of six character code that can be taken up so if you want I can take it as one zero 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 as a code or even if you want you can have a smaller one as well so suppose I take a code as two zero 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 as a group code and over here you can define the company name that is the group company name suppose I take the group company name as ABC group as a simple part and then you need to move on to the next and you need to fill your street box and all those things suppose I take this street as one two three the box number over here then the postal number you can take whatever you wish to and then you can take the city as suppose I take it as Texas and then you can select your country there are options you can go to this select options and it will give you all the country list so you can find the list of the companies as on the screen they had around 256 entries that means they are around 256 countries as on this and you can select your own country over here suppose I take it as United States so that is US you have taken it and if you want to now select the language and you don't know what language has to be taken then you can go to this option over here or the F4 key on your keyboard 
and once you click on to that it will give you the list of different languages available in SAP so if you'll find there is again 41 entries found that means there are 41 different languages in SAP can be used in so we need to go to this English language and now we can select this language as English and then you can go to currency now to decide the currency you need to again go for F4 option on the keyboard so that you can get the list of currencies so there are around 214 entries that means there are 214 currencies within the SAP system on which the transaction can be done so for the currency over here we need dollar so you can find USD that is United States dollar which can be taken up so double click on it and it will be selected so this is other parameters which you need to fill up over here and once you have filled these now you can go to save the option over here on the screen so once you save your company will be defined so as I clicked onto the save option and the system asked me for a request so whenever you do any of the configuration or customizes in the steps it the system will always ask you for a request so what you need to do is you need to go to this new that is create request and you can create a request of your own like I am putting up a request like creating or I can simply say customizing SAP FICO simple and I can save it now so what will happen now is whatever customization which we will be doing will be saved in this request and on the basis of this request only these customizations move to the next client from one client to the another client and to the live system so now we can click onto this right button or enter on the screen and it will be taken up in the request so you can see now the message generated data was saved that means the company has been defined and now we can go back with this back option over here on this green back or the F3 key can be used to go back so once you go back you can find the option over here that your company or your group company 2000 has been defined and the name of the company has also been reflected to you over here so this is how we have created or we have defined a company now moving to the next is the company code now we have created a group company now company over in SAP refers to a group company now moving on to the next we'll be defining a company code a company code is the legal entity or the smallest organizational unit in the financial accounting and on the basis of this company code only all the different financial accounting transactions are done so for financial accounting part company code is the most important because without a legal entity you cannot maintain any financials or any any financial statement or accounting in SP or any other software for that matter so we'll now create a company code or a legal entity in SAP system so let's move on to again to the SAP screen and in the same part you will find in the same path over here there is an option of edit copy delete check company code so this is for creating the company code so what we need to do is we need to execute this company code over here so once you execute the company code you will find a pop-up screen which gives you two options one is copy delete check company code and the another is edit company code data so now what we need to do is we need to go to the second option that is edit company code data so once I double click on to the edit company code data it takes you to the next screen and you can see now change view company code overview now in this to create your own company code or your own legal entity in SAP you need to go to the new entries so once you click on to the new entry it will take you to the next screen that is as you can see on your system so now over here you can define your company code or your legal entity so suppose my legal entity is 
again it can be a four character maximum of four character code so it can be alpha it could be numeric as well so it is preferred to have a numeric code so I will be having 2100 and I can name it over here the company name as so suppose I take the name of the company or the legal entity as ABC consulting LLC and I take the city now over here as Texas and then you can take the country as US and your currency as USD and your language is EN that is English now these are the options which you have taken and now we can go and we can save this option so as you will go for save the system will ask you further more details related to your entity So as I saved now, now you will find that a new screen or the new pop-up has been generated. Now in this you need to fill, uh, you need to fill the further details related to the entity as a legal entity has their respective addresses, telephone numbers, a particular name and all those details which need to be filled over here. So you can select the title. Their titles could be any of these like I select as company. So I need to put the name again ABC Consulting. LLC and now if you want a short term you can give a short text to it like ABC. If you want you can put the country that is US and then within US you can select the reason to which reason that particular company belongs to there are many different country names over here on your screen Alaska, American, Samoa, California, Florida and all Hawaii, then Indiana, Illinois a lot of different names so whichever reason you feel you can take that over here suppose I take it as NY that is New York so that is what has been taken now moving on you can fill your options like address over here as well whatever you need to fill it as so you can take all those things like I have taken even if you want to change your city then you can change your reason also over here as per the city now so you can search for Texas so that is over here TX that is Texas reason has been taken up and now if you want you can fill these further details on the below part however these are optional you can fill or you can leave them blank also but it is better if you have the details it should be filled so that these data can be picked up in any of the reports and other details but if you leave them blank you will not be able to generate these things in anywhere any reports or any printout or anything as such so it's up to you if you want to put the communication detail over here you can put the communication details as well else we can move on and we can click on to this the green right tick mark or we can enter on the screen and this data will be taken up so enter So you can see now the data has been taken up in the request now so the same request will be taken up now and in the same request will be saving again and again the same customization however we can create multiple requests for the same as well but we don't need it at this point of time so we'll be taking it in the same request number the customization of company code also and now we can click on to this continue and your configurations are saved with the request so you can see the message has been generated data was saved so now we have created the company code also that is the step which has been done so now moving to the configuration steps the first step we have completed we have completed the second one as well 
and now we need to move on to the third configuration step that is to assign the company to the company code so if you don't assign one company to the another company to the company code you will not be able to correlate or you cannot you will not be able to put a relation to each other so that is why we need to assign these to each other so that the relation can be set or the link can be set between one another so for the assignment now we need to go back to the path we can close we can now close this this uh, pop up screen over here and then we have moved now over here onto the screen so you can see now there are certain options like define or definition and then assignment so for creating any any configuration step in the enterprise structure we need to go to definition and for assigning one to another we need to go to the assignment so let's go to the assignment expand and then expand the financial accounting part also and once we have expanded the financial accounting you can find the first option that is assign company code to company now we can go and we can click on to this symbol or execute and now once we have it will take you to the next screen so over here you can find your company code on the first column this is COCD which refers to company code and you can find your company code is over here 2100 and your city is Texas and now we can define the company so the company means the group company so you can assign the group company over here so now we can go if you don't remember your group company what was the code what was the four digit or six digit character code you had then you can go to this option over here click on it and it will give you the list of different companies within the SAP system so you can see now the one which we have created was 2000 that is ABC groups and we can enter on it so once entered this particular company has been selected over here so you can see now the company code 2100 has been assigned with the company 2000 and now we can save this screen so once you save the relationship is set and the assignment is done as you can see assign company code to company so now the company code has been assigned to the company as you can see the message data was saved that means the relationship now has been saved so this is how we have defined the assigning the company to the company code and now moving on to the next is defining the business area so now before moving on to defining the business area it is important to understand what is business area all about so business area is an organizational unit of financial accounting that represents a separate area of operations or responsibilities within an organization and to which value changes recorded in financial accounting can be allocated even with the help of business area you can create financial statements and you can use this statements for various internal reporting purposes so in simple terms a business area is used to divide your business or your organization business into different operations or responsibilities or it can be can be regions or can be branches also or even a more practical example can be taken that like in a manufacturing concern they have got different number of plants for manufacturing purposes so every plant can be given a business area so what happened with that is that when every plant has got a business area so whatever the transactions which take place in the SAP system for any of the plant they need to they need to put that particular business area while posting those transactions so that those business area become mandatory for those plants whenever they do the transactions to put the business area so when you put those business area as a mandatory part the every transaction get recorded with the that business area so with that business area we are the organization is able to find the financial statement for a particular plant also so it gives you an advantage that till before SAP the organization was been able to have the financial statement as a 
for a legal entity but now the enterprise or the the organization can have financial statement as per the plant also on the basis of the business area so they can they can simply have a look of the financials and they can decide the income statement the liabilities and the assets of a respective plant and they can analyze accordingly as per the, the different plant to plant uh, financial status or financial statement uh, health similarly you can divide your fine business area that is one of the scenario that you can use the business area as a as per plant to plant and practically this has been has been used in many of the clients which has been done so otherwise you can even use business area for different reasons also so every reason can be given a business area so for that particular reasons for that particular transactions that business area has to be assigned or has to be put in so that the transaction can be posted with a business area basis and it will be able to generate reports for reason to reason wise also so how we can do in the SAP part let's see how we can create the business area so moving on to the SAP system to create we need to again go to the definition part so we need to go back to this definition then expand moving to the financial accounting then again expanding it and in this you can find define business area so once you want to go and define the business area you need to click on to this symbol and now you can see the screen has been generated so over here you have got the option now that you can go to new entries and it is up to you whether you want to go for the business area as per plant wise or as per the reason wise or as per the branch number wise or as per the different operations so it varies from client to client or from organization to organization as per the requirement so suppose I create a business area of 2000 and then 2010 similarly you can create 2020 2030 and you can name them as different reason or different plant like I gave it as plant 1 the next can be given up as plant 2 similarly you can give it as plant 3 the third one and you have any plant specific name then you can as even assign the plant name over here as well so these are the different plant name has been assigned I have given these as a name wise you can put a different plant to plant description accordingly and once you have created these you can go and you can save this screen so once you save your business area has been defined so this is how you need to create your enterprise structure that we have been talking about a while back so this is what we have been talking about that you need to create a group company that is a company in SAP then you need to go for creating a business uh, a company code and within the company code you need to create business area so within a company code you can have n number of business area depending upon your requirement how you want to have those reports or the reporting has to be done so the most important part is business area is used is that at the end of the day at the end of the month you can have reports you can have the financial statements and even the income statements on the basis of the business area and which can give you a uh, a reason to reason or plan to plan wise details detailed financials and the management can take internal decisions on the basis of that so moving up to the next step of the enterprise structure is credit control area the credit control area is an organizational entity which grants and monitors a credit limit for customers a credit control area can include one or more company codes so the credit control area is used as a credit management for the accounts receivable and sales and distribution part in the SAP system so as to restrict the credit 
limit to the customers and it can be reviewed the credit limit can be monitored for the customers and it can be changed later on as per the as per the creditability of the customer accordingly so you need to maintain the credit control area with respect to the customers for the company code so using the credit control you can minimize your credit risk by defining a credit limit for the customer and in that case the chances of getting bad debts or chances of getting the outstanding receivables or bad debts can be minimized so you can define or you can assign the same credit control area to more than one company code as well, even and the same credit control area can be used for multiple company codes but one particular company code can and cannot have multiple credit control area so to a company code only one credit control area can be assigned so let's see how we can create a credit control area into the SAP system and as per the configuration steps as you can see we need to define the credit control area and then we need to assign the credit control area to the company code as well so that the relationship can be set and the credit control area can be uh, becomes applicable to the company code the credit control area is here we can execute now we can define our own with the help of new entries so in this we have to fill a four digit alpha four uh, character alphanumeric code now suppose I put up again is 1200 why because I always want my company code to be taken up the same code with the others so as not to get confused with too many codes currency USD you don't need to fill the this particular part because this is for sales and distribution module now coming up next risk categories again you don't have to take it this has been defined with the help of credit management which is a different module what you have to do over here is just to define the credit limit for the customers so the limit which you define over here suppose I put it over here is 1 million that can be taken up over here as a tolerance for the customers has been defined now I can save this so the tolerance for the customers have been defined as 1 million if you want to increase it you can increase it over here if you want to reduce you can reduce it as well now after it we can save it over here the data was saved means your tolerance your credit control area has been defined now you need to assign the credit control area to the company code so moving up we have not uh, the description need to be filled for the credit control area so we always have to put it over here suppose my company code is 1200 so I put it as 1200 and now we'll be saving it again going back now I need to assign it to the company code so I have to go to the assignment so collapsing the definition and then going to the assignment spending spending the financial accounting and then assigning company code to the credit control area so execute and in this you can search your company code with the position your company code is 1200 enter now over here you can define your credit control area which you just created if you don't remember you can uh, press the F4 button on your keyboard and the list of all the credit control area will be reflected in which you can search your own and you can double click on that and it will be selected over here now once this has been done you can save it and your linkage between the credit control area and the company code is defined so as of now we have completed with the enterprise structure setting this is your organizational st structure and that is what we have defined in SAP just now as we have seen so we can go back now as you can see the plant 1 2 3 4 has been created so this is how you need to 
create your enterprise structure similarly and this is what all about which we have covered in the first training of the SAP FICO part so we'll see you with each of these topics covered from the next training sessions so till then take care thank you